What's up? My name is Technumber here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize ARC for the absolute best FPS possible. This video is only going to touch on in-game settings. It's not going to touch on Windows settings at all. So if you'd like to get even more FPS out of your PC after watching this video, in the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, Windows 11, and an NVIDIA optimization guide that'll really get a ton more out of your PC. That being said, all the standard, usual, common sense things apply. Try and run as few programs as possible in the background while playing the game. If you have Discord and things like that running, cool. But if you have a really bad GPU, try and disable hardware acceleration in all of those programs, including your browser. And make sure everything's up to date, Windows and graphics card driver included, etc, etc. This video is going to be incredibly important as Arc was free on Steam just a few days ago. And if you manage to grab it, you can keep it pretty much forever. On top of that, there's a brand new DLC and Arc 2 is on its way. I'll definitely have guides for that when it comes out. Anyways, without further ado, skipping over all the Windows stuff, once again, check down below. Let's head into the Steam client so we can start optimizing our game. Do you note that if you have the Epic Game Store version, etc., all you need to do is edit launch arguments the same way I do here, the same ones apply, though they'll be in a different location for you. So in your Steam client, so in your Steam client, simply search for Arc, and when you find it, right click, click Properties, and inside of here on the General tab, we're looking for Launch Options. You'll find all of these in the description down below. The ones everyone will be using are High and Use All Available Cores, though there are some more down below that I'll be copying that you need to do some manual work on. First of all, Preferred Processor. I'll add a space after typing this, and we'll need to enter a number here. Open your task manager with control shift and escape. And of course, mine looks a bit different. I'm on an insider build of Windows 11. Regardless, head across to the performance tab and the CPU tab inside of that so we can see exactly what's happening on our CPU. As you can see, I have 12 cores, 24 logical processors. The logical processors is what we're going to be putting in there for the number. So 24, in my case, 24. If yours is 16, if yours is 8, put that in there. Then on top of this, we have some more commands, but these are all user preference, or at least for the most part. First of all, SM4 lowers the image quality quite a bit as it plays around with shaders, but it can get you a ton of extra FPS. Use this only if you really want. Then we have DX10. Once again, this is only for very low-end computers or older graphics cards, so you may not want to include this. Finally, we have low memory. You don't want to include this if you have a PC with more than around 8 gigabytes of RAM. Usually, if you have 8 gigs, probably half of it is taken up by Windows and background programs, leaving the game with 4, which may not be enough for Arc, especially if you're running huge maps, mods, etc. So only include this if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM or lower. There we go. When we're done with this, you can close this pop-up and we can fire up the game to change some in-game settings. For me, I need to wait for an update to complete first. There we go. I can fire it up now. And I'll be playing just the normal standard Arc Survival Evolved. There are some other options there that may help you with FPS if you're on a super, super low end computer, but for the most part, you can ignore those. There we go, Arc's now opened, so I'll head into Options, and the first thing we want to do is go full screen and set the resolution to match our monitor. In my case, I have an ultra wide 3440 by 1440. And because I'm recording for YouTube, I'll instead drop this to 2560 by 1440, which is 16 by 9, 2K. I'll then click Apply and save once it adjusts. Then I'll head back to Options. Now that we've adjusted our resolution and window mode to match our monitor, you can, of course, lower these in order to get more FPS while you're in-game, though preferably you should use the resolution scale instead, as it should end up in everything being less blurry. But of course, you can play with both of these. Usually, I'll leave the resolution scale at about 80% here, but you can crank it up to 100 just to make things look a bit better. Graphics quality changes all of the settings on the list here, and of course, it gives us a good estimation of what graphics card does what. Running a 3080 Ti like I am, I can crank it all the way up to Epic, though if I install any mods and things like that, I'll be sitting at a solid 15 FPS. So I'd recommend leaving this on medium, even with super high-end hardware, otherwise you can crank this down to low for lower-end hardware. Of course, this only changes the rest of the settings here, and for some reason, it leaves anti-aliasing on Epic. This is something I really don't like, as it simply makes the game look a little bit blurrier, but it can also take away a huge amount of performance. I would absolutely recommend setting this to low, no matter what PC you're on. View distance, leaving it at medium is probably the best you're gonna get, 
though of course you can lower it down even more if you need extra FPS. World Tile Buffers, leave the set medium. Post Processing, I'd leave set to low. General Shadows, low. Terrain Shadows, low. These shadows I'd usually leave at low because you're not going to be staring at shadows all the time. I'd much rather take performance over crispy shadows. Finally, textures. This completely depends on what kind of graphics card you have because it depends on how much VRAM you have. It can be medium end but have high end VRAM, in which case you can crank this all the way up to epic and forget about it. Essentially, if you have around 4 gigabytes of VRAM or anything above, set it to epic here. Otherwise, say 2 gigabytes, medium, and anything lower than that in VRAM, have it set to low down here. Usually this has very little effect on FPS, though it will have an effect if you run out of VRAM. The sky quality, for some reason, eats away at FPS, set this to zero pretty much no matter what PC you're on. Then in the very center here, we have a ton of different settings. I'd usually leave these top ones as is. However, everything on the list here, I would usually turn off. SSAO, distance field shadowing, high quality VFX, which we'll need to restart our game for, color grading, light bloom, light shafts, low quality level streaming. You can leave on, but I'd recommend turning this off if you have the game on a faster SSD instead of a hard drive. Finally, on the right hand side, all of this is user preference, though the camera shake I'd usually recommend turning down just because it makes the game a bit less motion sicknessy. If you're struggling with that, especially consider turning off motion blur and any kind of blur anywhere else here. Anyways, with that comes the end of the optimization for the most part. We can apply, and because we changed some settings that requires a restart, we'll need to restart before we can see exactly how good our FPS is after the optimization. In these other tabs here, on the Advanced Settings tab, the only thing I'd recommend changing is the Client Network Bandwidth to be epic. Most network connections can handle more than 60 kilobytes a second. It's a capital B. So if you have anything faster than, say, a 1 mega line, set this all the way up and leave it at that. The rest of these tabs are completely user preference, so you can leave them all as is, apply, save, and we can exit out of the game now that we've changed our in-game graphic settings. Once you have them set, you can't change them again because you'll be editing and locking one of the configuration files just to make our game perform even better. So I'll open up where the game is installed. For me, I'll head across to Steam, right-click the game, hover over Manage, and click Browse Local Files. This takes us across to the install directory for Arc, and inside of here, we'll head into Shooter Game, Saved, Config, Windows No Editor, and it'll be opening GameUserSettings.ini. You can open this with any kind of text editor. For me, I'll be using Notepad. I'll start by scrolling down to the very bottom of this here, and we're looking for scalability groups. Essentially, some of the settings here haven't actually changed even though we changed them in-game. First of all, effect quality, we should set to zero. Same for true sky quality and ground clutter quality. We'll set all of these down to zero. You can play around with the other options in this file here, though I'd recommend just playing around with these. You can close it, right click it, click properties, and then inside of here on the general tab, click read only so it's ticked, apply and OK. This means that the game can no longer edit this file and it's forced to listen to everything that we have in here. If you do want to change your graphic settings later, come back here, right click properties and make sure that read only is unticked, apply and OK. At this point, you're able to fire up Arc, play it and you should get a ton more FPS compared to what you did before. Once again, if you'd like to get even more out of your computer, do check the description down below for a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get a ton more out of your computer. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.